uh, in Indonesia. I know that a lot of people say that uh, under the table money or bribing is the best way or is it the only way in many cases. But that's not true. As human beings, it is an illusion to think that we are able to do the right thing. The Holy Spirit is not making you to become a better person. No, 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 no. Holy Spirit comes to give us a new life. The dead made a life in Christ. Dear beloved friends, welcome to the new study called Established in Christ Likeness. I'm so glad that you decided to join me in the 24 lessons from Scripture to live more like Christ. Before we start, allow me to again remind you uh, to do the homework, to do the workbook before anything else. This study is designed into three foundational steps. The very first foundation, step one, is for you to uh, fill out the workbook because this is the foundation. Um, when you fill out this workbook, you will need to open the Bible. You will learn for yourself. Step two is to watch this teaching video after you completed the homework. Step three is for you to meet your sisters in Christ, your friends in the community, in your community to share your answers, to uh, hear from one another, to have fellowship in the body of Christ, to do the study together. So those are the three steps for this study. If you want to maximize the benefits from this study, you need to do all these three without skipping any of the three steps. And let's start. And before we start, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that we can meet again in the new study established in Christ likeness. It is our heart desire, Father, that we understand more of scripture. And as a result, our character and our daily life, our action is becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So friends, the part one of this new study, it's about Christian ethics. Lesson one is introduction to Christian ethics. So what is Christian ethics? Have you heard of that? Uh, the definition, I take it from Wayne Grudem. It says, it is any study that answers the questions. What does the whole Bible teach us about which acts, attitudes, and personal character traits receive God's approval and which do not. So imagine yourself in this situation. So ask yourself, what will you do? You dine in a res restaurant with your family after you pay and walking to your car and then you begin to look again at the bill and then you find out, oh, the restaurant did not charge me for the extra drink that I ordered. Would you go back and pay the drink that they did not charge you? Or another situation that you get caught by the police by, because you run a red light. And the common practice right, in this country, in this developing country is you can just bribe the police. Just give them money and then the police just let you go. Would you bribe the police or ask the police to give you the ticket because that is the right thing to do? Or in another situation that is more personal, you are invited to uh, your friend's ho home, a dinner party, and upon arrival, suddenly you have diarrhea. Oh no, I need to run to the bathroom, to the toilet. And then uh, you, you arrive and you run to the bathroom and you didn't make it. And then you spill on the rug, right? The soft beige rug. Well, you kind of like rub it and clean it a little bit. It's not really obvious, but it's there, the mark. Would you tell the host about the accident or would you just be quiet? So Christian ethics is about this, about daily life and about how do we apply what we know from scripture into our daily life. And the study of Christian ethics will help us to know what to do and what not to do in different life situations. Uh, and then we also learn which action will please God 
and which action grieves God's heart. And the study of Christian ethics is closely related to moral law. And we need to focus on God's and His character. And the goal for studying Christian ethics, what do you think the goal for studying Christian ethics is to know God's standard, to please Him, to honor Him, and obey Him in our daily life. And then that's the what, right? What Christian ethics. Now, why? Why do we need to study Christian ethics? The answer is in Ephesians 5.10. And find out what pleases the Lord. Christian ethics, we study that so that we know what pleases the Lord. And that is why we need to study Christian ethics. Do you know what will please the Lord? Scripture is given so we can learn what pleases God. And the Holy Spirit is given so we can live according to what pleases the Lord. And just a thought, have you ever wondered why we need to please God? Is He some kind of narcissistic God that is uh, hungry for worship, hungry for us to please Him? Is it? Is He the kind of God? Is He a cruel God who will hit us when we uh, do bad things? And why? Why do we need to please Him? Have you ever wondered about that? We need to please Him because His moral law is good for us. It helps protect us from harm and destructions. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9, uh, it says that God's laws are perfect. They protect us, make us wise, and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. God knows that love alone, human race, will speed into destructions because of our innate sinful nature. Therefore, for our own good and for our own protection, He gave, he gave us His moral law. He expects us to know and to obey in our daily life. So as we live in obedience, He will give us blessings, joy, peace, and righteousness, and will spare us from destructions and also i would like to highlight philippians 1 verse 9 to 11. this is also will answer why do we need to study christian ethics the first says and this is my prayer the apostle paul that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Scripture instructs us to grow in love, knowledge, and insight. For what purpose? What is the purpose? So that we can discern what is best and what is pure and blameless, filled with the fruit of righteousness. And what, can, what kind of knowledge and insight do we need to grow? The knowledge and insight of God's moral law and His character, which are both written in Scripture. Therefore, when Scripture mentions both knowledge and insight, it means that we need to gain a well-rounded understanding, which includes the knowledge, the mind, right? What we know, information, oh, this is what the Scripture said. And also, we need to grow in our wisdom, intuition. Wisdom, what is wisdom? What is the definition of wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to apply Scripture knowledge to certain situation correctly and appropriately. Right? Sometimes we know something and well, we don't have wisdom. We don't know how to apply. And we don't know in this situation, I'm confused. Which scripture do I need to, to hold on to right now? I don't know. And that's where wisdom comes from. Knowledge needs to be paired with wisdom. Why? Because we need wisdom in order to apply knowledge of scripture to specific life situation. Um, and in this uh, study of Christian ethics, as I preparing for this message, I was thinking how the best 
uh, way, method to teach about Christian ethics. And I, uh, one day in my quiet time, the Lord spoke that, how about testimonies? How about you invite those people that you know live a life righteous and glorifying to God and invite them to give their testimony. And today uh, I invite my friend to give uh, his testimony. I am so grateful today that I have my friend Dennis to give his testimony. Upon our conversation many years ago, I know that uh, when he first came back to Indonesia, when he was uh, in the process of uh, acquiring driver license, he did not want to bribe and he uh, do the right thing, although it takes months and it's difficult. So. Dennis, so thank you for joining me in this uh, lesson one of Christian ethics learning. And thank you for being willing to share your story with us. So first, can you please tell, uh, tell us uh, who you are, like uh, your profession, your family, your ministry? Okay, well, thanks for your, thanks for your time and thanks for having me. Um, I work in a company specializing in swimming pool systems. And um, I wear different hats in the company, uh, from PPIC, product planning, inventory control, all the way to troubleshooting and product development. Uh, so it's quite a broad spectrum of my work. Yeah. How about your family? Are you married? Are you single? Uh, yep, married in 2015. Uh, we are blessed with one son, Elliot, and he's uh, six today. And that's uh, all the blessing that we really enjoy and we also enjoy traveling as a family. Um, we also like adventures. We like to spend time with uh, uh, others as well, like as, as like well, sharing the blessing that we receive through a means of uh, foundation. Mary has foundation of her own and she's a pediatrician by profession. And uh, we also like to use that blessing uh, through her professions to bless uh, less fortunate kids mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. through her foundations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as for yourself, uh, what ministry uh, do you do, Dennis? Uh, currently, I'm in the uh, Deep Dive Discipleship, uh, mentored by Hendra. And I have a mentee as well. And I have uh, five members, oh, sorry, four members in our group. And we going through the regeneration uh, curriculum at the moment. So you're basically in the men's ministry serving That's together. That's exactly yeah. yes, yeah. Men's yeah. ministry with other men's mm -hmm. joining hands together mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. journey through life. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So back to the experience when you uh, acquired your driver license. Can you tell us what happened at that time? Oh yeah, so that's in uh, 2018. So uh, at that time, uh, Miari and um, Elliot was in Kuala Lumpur uh, because uh, he was born there. And throughout the two months process, I was going in and out uh, well, from here to Kuala Lumpur and back. And I guess because the process was very time consuming and we we're more focusing on his birth, I completely forgot that my driving lessons uh, needs to be renewed. And back then, the expired date is my birthday, which is August 17. So I believe uh, I flew to Kuala Lumpur on, let's say, the 15th to pick him up. And then we came back on the 16th. And obviously, August 17 is uh, Independence Day in Indonesia. So everything's closed. And on August 18th, I went to the uh, uh, renewal, I guess the renewing um, uh, office. And then uh, it was too late because you have to renew it uh, prior to the expiry date. So at that time, the only option that I had was I have to take it again, like start from the theory th through the uh, road test uh, and then uh, acquiring it like as if from zero. So I believe on the 20th of August, if I'm taken, I went to the office and go through the tests and I passed the theory, but unfortunately I failed on the road test. Mm -hmm. So how many times did you fail the road test? Well, I believe I failed either four or five times. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, yeah. That's a lot, That's yeah. a lot, yeah. yeah, I yeah. So. And, and this is in the span of several, times, uh, several months because I think if I fail once, I need to have a span of two weeks time to retake before I can retake it again. 
Wow, yeah. that's a long time. And I, I know you're a good driver and you've been driving for many, many years. So driving test is actually is not difficult for you. But uh, what happened? What, why, why did you fail? Well, <clears throat> honestly, um, well, I've been driving since I was 16. So I guess in, well, that's quite a bit of time, like 20 over odd years. Uh, when I came in to renew my license, uh, honestly, I came with a pride. I thought, like, I'm a good driver. It's easier for me to just pass it. And true enough, when I, do the, when I did the uh, theory, I think I passed, I'd say, 38 out of 40 questionnaire, which is a high 90%. So I'm very confident that uh, I can pass the road test. And then when I was taken to the, uh, to the parking lot where I had to do my road test, the test was quite impossible to, uh, to take because I have to maneuver uh, the car into a parking slot within one, basically one throw. Uh, this, I cannot stop, I cannot move the transmission from uh, reverse to uh, drive. Basically, I, just ha I have to do it in one go, which I think is impossible and also I feel it's unrealistic because in real world, you don't have to have in one go, you, you can do it several maneuvers mm -hmm. in order to park properly in your parking slot. Mm -hmm. So what makes you at a time did not just take the shortcut? Why don't, didn't you just bribe to get the license? That's what everybody's doing in Indonesia. Yeah, I, I was told, yeah, that's right. When I, uh, as soon as I failed the test, I was approached by several people uh, selling the service, saying that, hey, if you want to pass this road test, uh, just give me this amount of money. And all you have to do is just sit there and uh, gonna in five minutes or whatever, 20 minutes later, we're going to take a picture. And then in about a week time, you can come back and pick up your renewed driving license. But I thought at that time, well, you know, it's going to be other ways, right? And again, like when I walk in with the pride, I thought like, well, maybe I'll just do the second one. You know, it, I think I still have a chance to do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, after the second fail uh, test, I figured out that uh, I have to learn something from this experience. So I pray. <laughs> I, I, I believe I pray mm -hmm. in the beginning, but it was like a short prayer. God, give me favor. That's it. Boom. Right. And I feel by the second, after the second failure, I believe that I pray more fervently. And um, I really want to pass. Uh, and again, I failed. So at that time, I figured out, well, let's maybe try praying uh, more fervently and then also uh, maybe do it a third time. You know, I, I believe that God will open the doors this time. And then it didn't happen, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> so at that time, my heart, I guess, changed from being prideful to being humbled by mm. it because... Uh, Obviously, this is out of my control. So at that time, I thought like, well, maybe I need practice because it's it is a, a right hand drive after all. I've been driving with a left hand drive uh, in, in left hand drive country. So I thought, okay, let's just do that. Let's try again. Uh, on Sunday, they opened, and uh, I brought my own car, and then I practiced the parking and all that, and then. Um, uh, some, some funny thing. I saw my driver. He was like smirking when I did. I, I didn't go through the slot in one in one go, and then I go like, okay, now you try. If you fail, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna affect your KPI. <laughs> you're, you're my driver. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Yeah. So again, I uh, changed my heart. Changed from being prideful to being humble and to being uh, fully surrendered to God mm -hmm. throughout the process. Yeah. So definitely you keep your integrity. You just don't take the shortcut and just bribe and just pay to get your driver license. So in that, keeping your integrity, what price do you need to pay, Dennis? Well, not having a driving license, technically, um, it's still, well, a lot of people said it's okay. You don't really need your driving license unless you get pulled over by the police. But um, at that time, uh, I have to... Uh, hire my driver on weekends, I believe that uh, over time. And then I can only drive around the complex, you mm -hmm. know, just to mm -hmm. uh, practice. Mm -hmm. So I don't forget uh, the my driving skill. Um, so that's about it. Pretty much I don't really go anywhere for mm -hmm. three months mm -hmm. until 
uh, I took the test for the fifth times or the sixth times, which at the time got open doors. Um, it's quite a funny story too, like because suddenly after the fifth or the sixth times, uh, the entire road test has been changed. Suddenly I just have to go 100 meters forward and 100 meters backward in the straight line and that was it. And not like this anymore. You don't have to maneuver, <laughs> you don't have to zigzag, you mm -hmm. don't have to zigzag backward mm -hmm. through the cones mm -hmm. anymore, which mm -hmm. is quite funny. Like mm -hmm. suddenly they just change over a three-month period. Mm -hmm. But the, I believe they had a different supervisor, I think. Uh, at mm -hmm. that time it was like a, through a transition. And so the, the new supervisor thought like maybe it's easier just to uh, do like the straight forward and back mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. reverse. That was it. So God yeah. made a way finally I believe, for you yeah. by changing. I believe God, yeah, <laughs> work rules, yeah. open door for me to mm -hmm. help me process uh, my heart. Mm -hmm. It's it's a learning mm -hmm. process, and also uh, open doors for me to get my life mm -hmm. yeah. renewed. Yeah. yeah. So how that um, experience that um, keeping mm -hmm. your integrity at that time help your walk uh, with God and maintaining your integrity into the future doing the right thing is it easier for you after that experience uh, well i believe it's um, a process that god wants me to go through because um, by keeping my integrity uh, number one it uh, helps me sleep better at night and number two it also uh, helped me to follow his footsteps closely and i think that if i look back all this process kind of helped me to um, go to a process or uh, to a stage where uh, I'm more open to stewardship, mm. uh, mm -hmm. stewarding God's resources through what we, we do at, at work. So I believe that's a process that uh, I really want to emphasize to all of you. Uh, you never know like what kind of learning process that, or learning curve that God wants you to learn at that time. Mm -hmm. But I know it's something good because uh, for myself, if, even though it feels like it's a, st it's a steep learning curve, but it allows me to uh, process uh, my humility and also through that, uh, my stewardship in, in God's resources. Mm -hmm. um, for the last questions that I have, so what uh, encouragement would you give to uh, the audience out there who will watch this interview, especially those who doesn't have a driver license and will acquire it for the first time or regret uh, i mean forget to renew just like you okay. and it needs to go through again yeah, yeah. from the mm -hmm. beginning uh, i would say that um, there's always options for you to take uh, in indonesia i know that a lot of people say that uh, under the table money or bribing is the best way or is it the only way in many cases but that's not true uh, because we are given opportunity to do the right thing and sometimes we miss the opportunity because we listen to people a lot more than listening to uh, our peers at, work, uh, at, the, at church or our mentors or reading through the Bible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we miss that point that what God wants us to do and we just go with the flow of the value of the world. Just like what Romans 12 uh, 2 says that do not be conformed to the value of the mm -hmm. world but be transformed in a renewing mind. Mm -hmm. So God's word? God's spirit and God's people, right, Amen. will enable us to always do That's right. the right thing. Amen. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Dennis, for uh, sharing your experience on how you maintain integrity. It's not easy. It takes uh, three months and then failing five, six times, but you did not give up. And may this testimony be encouragement for many that will watch and do the same thing. Yeah, thank you. Friends, I hope that this interview testimony will bless you and it will encourage you and inspire you to do the right thing, maintaining your integrity in whatever you do and especially in driving, uh, getting the driver license for the first time. So friends, after you hear the testimony, right? Is it hard to do that? Of course it is hard. And as human beings, it is an illusion to think that we are able to do the right thing before God. We, as an analogy, right? Um, let's say in your home, in the ceiling, there's a mouse. And then the mouse is dead there in the ceiling. After about three days, the smell, the rotten smell from the dead mouse will 
fill the house. You will not be comfortable inhaling the bad rotten smell, right? And the same thing with us because of sin, the inner sinful nature. We are born with the propensity to sin. We are dead in our sin. We are dead just like that dead mouse. Sooner or later, our sin will impact the people around us. We will hurt others and we will hurt God's reputation. And when the Holy Spirit comes, the power of the gospel, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Holy Spirit living in us, and the Bible said the Holy Spirit has made you alive in Christ. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit is not making you to become a better person. No, 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 no. We are dead, just like that rotten, smelly dead mouse. How can it be better improving? By improving? No. The Holy Spirit comes to give us a new life. The dead made a life in Christ. The Holy Spirit made us a life in Christ. And that is the only hope, my friends, for us to be able to live according to uh, God's written scripture, to please Him and to do Christian ethics. There is no other empowerment and it is impossible without Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit. I hope that it is very clear that Christian ethics is not about the do's and the don'ts. It is about our relationship with Jesus Christ, the triune God, God the Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, because we love Him so much of what Christ died done for us that we want to live in obedience to him in our daily life that is christian ethics and my friends uh, i just want to summarize the message today into two principles that you need to remember number one christian ethics is the study about x attitude and personal character which pleasing to god's eyes number two we study Christian ethics because we want to live according to God's moral law, to please Him in our daily living. And for the application, what insights do you gain about this study, Christian ethics, after you do the homework from the workbook, listening and watching this teaching video? What do you get? What new insight? Number two, Share your experience of being confused or feeling lost when facing a situation in the past because you don't know about God's moral law. You don't know what to do because you don't understand scripture. You never study scripture. You don't know what is the right thing to do. What is the uh, sinful thing to do? Number three, how do you struggle in applying scripture in your daily situation? It is a different thing, right? When someone uh, do something because she doesn't know better and compared to someone doing the sinful thing intentionally right because yeah I know that but I just don't want to obey it's it's different why 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 is it after you know then uh, you still struggle to obey uh, friends uh, I hope that this study the lesson one will kind of like giving you the overview of what Christian ethics is all about and let us pray father we thank you for your uh, blessing upon us thank you for giving us scripture so that we can learn about your character what is it acts attitudes and personal character that please you and which one do not please you give us a soft heart the leading of the holy spirit the power of the gospel that enable us to fall in love with you and because of that love we want to live in obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, uh, I hope to see you in lesson two next week.